Empower Radio presents Simple Steps, Real Change with Cheryl Maloney and Kenny Brixey. You'll find inspiration, support, and simple steps to help you on the path to a better life. Simple steps lead to real change. Here are your hosts, Cheryl Maloney and Kenny Brixey. Well, welcome everyone to Simple Steps Real Change. This is Cheryl. Kenny and I are welcoming back our very special guest, Regina Cates from Romancing Your Soul. And tonight we're talking about mastering your mind that has a mind of its own. First up, though, we want to talk about knowing when something is right for you. There's a story you may have heard about the man standing on his rooftop during a flood. Three times he has the opportunity to be saved, but he kept saying, I'm waiting for God to save me. And when he gets to heaven's gate, because he dies, he says to God, why didn't you save me? And God goes, well, I sent you three lifelines and you turned them all down. You chose to ignore them. So, Kenny, have you ever had a time when you've been thrown a lifeline or a key to your happiness and you second guessed it until it disappeared? Oh yeah, this this happens so frequently with 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 me and 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 everybody else as well. Uh, we get so convinced that it has to be a certain way that we fail to be open enough to see the different opportunities before us. So we tend to have these preconceived notions about what life should be like, and it's funny you think about the perfect job, the perfect spouse, the perfect whatever, and while you're looking for what you think is perfect, you miss what's right for you because you just have these preconceived notions that are going on. And we're hearing a lot from folks out there, how do I know if it's right for me? Mm-hmm. What do you tell your clients or your your coaching clients, Kenny, when they're just second guessing themselves? Well, it's it, it all boils back to what is working for you. you know, will, will this step, will this opportunity work to get you where you want to be? Now, of course, you need to be aware of 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 what your goal is, of what your vision is. You know, where do you want to be ten years from now? Is this opportunity going to get you there? If so, then your heart is leading you in the right direction, which it always does. But you're reading it correctly. Um, if it's not going to get you closer to your vision, then maybe it's not the step that you need to take, and it's not the opportunity that uh, that you um, that will serve you. So just be aware of what you want, and be aware of whether these opportunities pop, you know, these lifelines will get you in the direction you want to go. And you know, I think that's a great way to look at it. Does it serve you, or does it not? And the other thing that we run into a lot of times is people get so afraid to make a decision. They don't want to grab that lifeline because what if it's the wrong one? (laughs) Well, you just go, okay, does this serve you or not? Is it your lifeline? Okay. If you make the decision, you grab onto that lifeline and you go down a path and you go, you know what? It was the right thing then, but maybe there's something different or a variation of what you're doing. Decisions are never final. So you can always go a different direction. It's what serves you best. So, Kenny, you're right. I think keeping in mind that, you know, is it getting you closer to where you want to be? If that stays in your heart, in the back of your mind, you're going to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. You just have to trust yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to – a lot of people get stuck in their head so much. It's it's that – quote that you hear me say almost every show and it's that paralysis by analysis if you get stuck in analyzing whether this is the right one or not you're never going to find the right one you've just got to follow your heart you've got to feel what's right if it leads you and serves you in the direction that you want to go go for it and like cheryl says it's not carved in stone you can change if it doesn't work out Well, and it's interesting as we're talking about this because our guest tonight, let's bring Regina on. Regina Cates is an expert in helping us to tune into our souls for what's right for us. And Regina herself listened to her soul, changed her life, and moved from a home that she knew all of her life, crossed the country, and landed in California. She's a transformational writer. She is a coach. She's a speaker. And tonight we're going to talk about mastering your mind that has a mind of its own. Now, for anyone that has a question for Regina, our lines are open. The phone number is 248-809-3475. Again, 
3475. And for anyone that just doesn't want to hear the voice on the radio, or maybe you're in another part of the world, you can always email us at simplesteps at me, M-E dot com. So, Regina, welcome back to the show. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Kenny. Good evening. Hi, Regina. It's so good to have you back. Oh, thank you. It's good to be here. Well, Regina, you say all the time that the mind is not the smartest part of us. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean that the mind is is the place where we hold things that have happened to us in the past, um, such as uh, growing up with maybe a dysfunctional relationship, and we hold those judgments that we're given. We hold those things that people put on us, like I'm not good enough, I'm unworthy, and those we after a period of time, Cheryl, that we run those tapes. So it's not the smart of us, smartest part of us because just because we have a thought doesn't mean it's true. Well, so you, it's the mind is where we find all of our filters, we find all of our judgments, we find all of the things <laughs> that that keep us from getting to the truth. Um, but then in our conversation the other day, you say their mind is not our enemy. Um, That's correct. Mm-hmm. You know, it just it just seems that way. So we're it gets kind of confusing. Can you? elaborate on that a little bit? Sure, absolutely, Kenny. Thank you. Um, The mind is a tool for the higher part of us, the part of us that is kind and wise, and the part of us that is our own special cheerleader. You know, it's the one that brought Regina or me out of the the depths of feeling even at one point suicidal because the mind tapes were running that I was going to hell, I was not good enough, I was unworthy. And so the part of me, Kenny, that is the essence, the soul. It's what I call in the book the heart of us, the part of us that is wiser and greater than the mind, brought me out of that slump. And it's because I learned how to master a mind with a mind of its own. Well, Regina, we actually have a question from one of our folks who's been anxiously waiting for you to be on tonight. And what she wants to know is, I do pretty well, but I notice I still have these self sabotaging thoughts or aspects, and I don't allow myself to really enjoy things. How do I overcome that? Mm -hmm. Well, the way that we overcome these tapes and all of these things that have happened to us is basically to reprogram our thoughts and reprogram our mind. You know, when I had this steady stream of mind garbage is what I called it, Cheryl, and, and I know that you and Kenny are both familiar with this because it's the steady stream of thoughts that limit us or they bring up bad memories, and they they make us feel that we're less than, and and they make us feel all of these limit us, basically. Let's just use that as the word, the the key word tonight is limiting. Then we change those, and the way that we change those is that we evaluate those. You know, am I really worthless? Well, no, I'm not worthless, and here are the reasons why. So it's a matter of retraining your brain. It's a matter of retraining your, your thoughts to be your biggest fan and your greatest supporter. Does that make sense? Definitely did. Do Do you have a, a a suggestion on how do you retrain? Is it just a mm-hmm. is is it just the questioning, or is there more to that? How well, do you retrain it, your thought process? It's a process of becoming a friend of your mind. So that's why I say it's not the enemy, because our mind is not the enemy. It's the place that holds all of the wounding for me, because all of those thoughts that were put on me as a child, or as a young adult, or even you know yesterday. <laughs> you know, by whoever's passing on the street. We hold on to those things, and we continue to play them over and over. So the, it's a matter of evaluating these thoughts, Kenny, absolutely, but it's also a matter of changing them. And that's why I say to master a mind with a mind of its own, we have to think about what we're thinking about while we're thinking it. <laughs> I love okay? that. <laughs> now, you and, you and, and, and uh, Cheryl and I uh, the other day, discussed how a lot of people are not even aware that they're thinking. Mm -hmm. I am now at this point, and I'm very grateful that I've been able to do this, to think about absolutely everything. I am connected 24-7 to my thought stream. And the reason that I am so purposeful in doing that is because our thoughts create our behavior. Our behavior creates our life. And in my experience and what I see with people that I work with is when our thoughts are purposeful, Our life is purposeful. When our thoughts are positive, our life is positive. So Mm -hmm. everything that we want is based upon what we program into this beautiful brain that is really a tool for the higher, wiser part of us. Yeah, that's that's kind of kind of an opposite way of looking at it from what we've been taught. It's like our we've been taught that our 
that our, our, our feelings direct our behavior, but you're saying that it's our thoughts that, that direct it. Well, it's it's part of it's both, but you know, if you'll think about it, Kenny, let's let's use an example here, okay? We're on a street that has limited parking, okay? We mm-hmm. park our car. Let's say you live in L.A. like I do, and you know, there's limited parking all over the city, so you have to look at the signs. And let's say that we don't look at the sign, and we come back from shopping and we get a parking ticket, and our immediate thought is, why me? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Why me? Okay. First of all, I feel my mind is going to tell me the egotistical part of me, the one that's self-centered, and that's why we have to master a mind with a mind of its own because it's all about me, right, Kenny? And it's all about you, and it's all about Cheryl, but right. it's not all about us. So uh-huh. we have to see the bigger picture, and by looking at that sign and taking responsibility that we are the one that put ourselves in that particular position. So in that moment, we say, well, wait a minute. We're the one that parked there. See, we assume responsibility for that. But that is challenging a mind that's automatically going to justify our behavior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess I sit here and, and as I'm thinking about this, you, you talked about it's not just about me. And we have to look at a bigger picture. And one of the things that comes up all the time is somebody will go through some type of event or circumstance. And all of a sudden they think all everybody's talking about is them. You know, they made a mistake or, you know, they went through, they got divorced or they lost their job or whatever the case may be. And then we automatically go to this place where everything's, everyone around us must be thinking poorly about us. But yet the truth is they're not thinking about us at all. We just That's create correct. this in our mind. That's mm-hmm. correct, Cheryl. Thank you. That's a, that's an A plus. That's a gold star. Because why we master a mind with a mind of its own is because our mind has a mind of its own. Our mind is going to create whatever it wants to create, whether it's true or not. So, Kenny, to your original question, how do we do this? We evaluate our thoughts. We weigh them. Are they true? Are they real? Are they accurate? And if they are true, real, and accurate, then we pursue that even further to ask, are they limiting? You know, I mean, I could feel that I'm overweight, and that could be absolutely true. I could be overweight. However, beating myself up with repetitive thoughts of I'm too fat and I need to lose weight is not productive. You would then want to change that to a positive that supports. I am today cutting back on what I'm eating. I am today exercising, not limiting yourself, but saying what it is positive that you're doing to support. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sense? And you're saying... Oh, sorry. You're saying you do it about what are you doing right now today? Not what did you do in the past? Not what are you going to do in the future? What are you doing right now? Correct. Because Cheryl, when we master a mind with a mind of its own and Kenny, how we do that is to think about what we're thinking about when we're thinking about it. We have to stay present right here Mm -hmm. because life is only real right this second. You know, Regina, the why do you think just, people have such a hard time with that concept? They still want to live in the past or they or they want to live in the future. Hey, when I get this job, I will be or, you know, if only I'd done this, I would be. And they live in those two places where they can't change anything. Mm-hmm. And they can't create the future that they want because the future that you want to have, as, as the three of us know, and so many other people do that are happy – is created by the actions that we take today. You know, the past is over. We are to learn from the past. We have wonderful memories of the past. That's great. We, we learn from the things that were challenging from us, the relationships that went sour, the bad financial deals. But the way that we make those better for our future is to take different action now. And the way that we do that is to think about what we're thinking about when we're thinking about it so that we can be purposeful in our thoughts, so that we can be purposeful in our actions, so that we can purposefully create the tomorrow that we want. Mm -hmm. That's power, ladies and gentlemen. That is true, true power. That's as powerful as we get is to create our own future, to Mm -hmm. create our own present. I found something that that works for me in in staying in this 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 thought process that you're talking about here is for me, it's all led or kicked off, let's say by, by a feeling. And if, when I feel any kind of negativity and it's, it could be minute, I know that that's some sort of limiting belief kicking in and it causes me to investigate. And then I ask myself, what is this all about? What purpose does it serve? 
And if it serves a purpose, how long do I need to stay with this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's and, right. And it just it forces. And I think that that this is doing <laughs> what you're talking about because it keeps me in the present. It keeps me from going uh, into that that spiral of this negative feeling builds into another, builds into another, and all of a sudden the future is caving in on me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> and you, you, have you ever noticed, Kenny, that like 100% of what we fear in the future never happens? You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <No>? yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's interesting, at least in my experience and the people that I work with, it, it, they can think of these horrible scenarios and they never come true. But we don't want to concentrate on all of the horrible stuff. We want to concentrate on all the wonderful stuff that we can do. It doesn't mean that our head's buried in the sand. We know exactly what's going on, but it means that for our life to have a positive life, we keep our life positive. To heal ourselves, we must redo those tapes that have been playing for us over and over. You know, my mom didn't love me. My mom didn't love me. All I wanted was my mom to hug me, this kind of thing. And we're concentrating on that in the past and what will never change because mom has now passed away instead of living today. Yeah. Well, and that's something that, you know, I bring up all of the time because so many people are worried about what could possibly happen. And you just said it just perfectly. You worry about what might happen. And, you know, the statistics about that are maybe the worst case possibility happens 7% of the time. Mm -hmm. So you Mm -hmm. spend all your life focusing on this very slight chance and you lose all of the time that you could have focusing on everything that's good and more than likely will happen. So you waste today. You do waste You know, Jack's a good example and I use this all the time. You know, his attitude is 99% of my body's healthy. What do you think I'm going to focus on? Mm -hmm. The 99%. That's exactly right, Cheryl. And that's why it's so important to Think about what we're thinking about. Think about our feelings, too. Kenny, that's extraordinarily important. I'm a feeling being. We're emotional, we're intellectual, we're a physical, and we're spiritual. And all of these are to be balanced. We're feeling. We must feel. You know, when you get angry, a thought comes up, my goodness, I'm going to be as, as rude to that driver as, you know, it just happened to me coming home just a minute ago. Mm-hmm. But I, I promise I was not rude to him. But it was like they automatically, you know, people, when I was rude, automatically just operate based upon some thought that comes to their head because they're frustrated or whatever. Mm-hmm. We have yeah, to be it's, you in just, charge of you, that. You, you act out of habit, and habits are not always a great thing. <laughs> so, well, yeah. especially, Kenny, and I'm glad you brought that up because all of this stuff is a habit. And mm-hmm. so we, we form new habits. And like I said before, a lot of people are not even aware that they're thinking. It's not that they're not aware that they're thinking because they're not connected to it. They're not the mm-hmm. author of their thoughts. They're not right. connected like with this little string to make sure that they're not rationalizing behavior that hurts someone else or themselves. Yes, it's okay to you know have a six-pack and then jump off the bridge. No, it's not. Yeah. Well, and Re- Regina, one of the things that we hear all the time is, well, If everyone else would just learn from this, it'd be a better world. And my response is, it has to start with us. So when you talk about that driver and that rude driver, and you're a great example, you're not going to act in kind because it starts with you. That's correct, yeah, because the ego wants to change someone else. It's always someone else that needs to do it. That's one of the deals that we're dealing with right now, Cheryl, as you know, with the apathy that we have uh, throughout the world, actually, is we're waiting for someone else to go first. There is no one else to go first. It's us. We want a peaceful life. We become peaceful. We want to be uh, financially secure. Then we become financially secure. We take those actions. There's no one out there that's going to help. Yeah, Does and if you sense? want other people to to make changes, the best way for them to do that is to learn from your example, because you know you can you can preach and teach till you're blue in the face, but until somebody sees your example, they don't find value in it. Well, and then so. the example of how wonderful life is when we do these things. I am yeah. in charge of Regina. I am only in charge of Regina. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, it's mm-hmm. taken me a long time to be in charge of Regina. Let me just tell you that. You know, it's been a yeah. process and learning. But I'm proud that I'm now a purpose, purposeful person. Yeah. One, one, of, my, uh, one of my best teachers taught me uh, an, uh, uh, an example of, of this, and that is that we have all of these highways our thought processes are all like like highways running through our mind. 
Well, anytime one of those highways is leading us the wrong way, if we want to change that, we've got to rebuild it into a superhighway. And that is just the process of starting to break that down a little bit, start building back what works for you, start changing the direction as you need to. It's not a snap your fingers and you're done. It's like you're talking about. Think about what you're thinking about when you're thinking about it so that you can start making the shifts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, the people that I work with one-on-one and and in workshops and others, they get it. There's an aha moment. They go, got it. I got it. Mm -hmm. And Because you become powerful in that moment. It's all of a sudden you, this something that is mysterious, I guess we call the essence or the heart or the soul, Mm -hmm. is in charge. It's like you've woken up and, and there's this presence that's watching over your mind it's like you're now the gatekeeper of it and it's great fun because you're in charge and 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 that power comes from within it doesn't come from somebody else it doesn't come from outside regina didn't give it to her students it came from within correct that's correct absolutely everything that uh that we need in order to do this is already there we just have to touch to it we have to trust it like you were talking about earlier before I came on, the trust, the inner knowing. And th- by mastering a mind with a mind of its own, then you are able to hear the peacefulness. Whenever it's the soul or the essence talking, it's peaceful. We just know that it's the right thing to do. And there's not mm-hmm. this confusion of the mind where the fear and all of this other stuff comes up. Yeah. Well, Regina, what do you say to people when they go... You know, I can control myself, but unless this person, you know, my spouse, my kids, whatever, does what I want them to do, I'm always going to be unhappy. Mm-hmm. Um, ego, ego driven. And the thing that I would do in that particular circumstance is really work with the ego, work to bust through the ego, because when you, when you have an ego boxing, as <laughs> you know, I love that term, Whenever you're going to try to project what someone else has to do, their spouse or whatever, then it's not going to work because the spouse, they have to come together as a communicative relationship and determine what's best for the relationship. And when one person is pointing a finger, it's an ego. So what I would recommend that someone would do is take full responsibility for their behavior. That's it. That's the only thing that you can do. And if sometime that relationship does not work out, then it will be proven to you with time. But you have to be the best person that you can be, regardless of whatever anybody else does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- th- that's that's so true. Um, there are several examples in my life of of situations where, you know, I had that same thought process. If they would only change, I'm doing it right. If they'd only change. Well, I, I learned different and learned that the change had to happen with me. The relationships that worked through that were the ones that people saw my example of trying to work my stuff, Mm -hmm. and they chose to do the same. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we have some incredible relationships. And then the ones that didn't work out are the ones who didn't choose to work on their stuff. You know? That's right, because we're all in charge of ourselves, and when we all yeah. become in charge of ourselves and responsible for ourselves, Kenny, then we live in a different world. Exactly, exactly. And and, and the, the, the difference between now and before I learned all of this was the relationships that no longer are in my life. Because I did the work on me, I'm okay. That's right. That's right. That's I know that, right. that worked out the way it needed to. Mm-hmm. That's another thing, because you know that this higher essence that we are, the soul, has a different plan for us. And when we're in that, what I call divine flow, with the mind quiet, and you've mastered it, and you're, you're now you know, bubbling thoughts up from the soul, and they come to you and go, oh, my goodness, that's very creative. If you run in that particular divine flow, just like me moving to Los Angeles, I didn't question, I just did, then that's how our life is supposed to operate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 amazing the clarity that that comes through when you allow this to have. It's like what we talked about when you start allowing those messages and those opportunities to to present themselves. It's amazing how fast that um, and how well, clear it, that is. Yeah, because I truly believe that in my life, this this essence that's out there, this whatever this thing this thing is that works on our behalf, really wants the best for us. It's like me going to that party that I, we talked about last time and being able to meet Deepak Chopra and Marianne Williamson and ask them for endorsements for my book. My mind said, oh, my gosh, you don't even need to go. <laughs> okay? That's what my mind said. You don't need to go. That's going to be boring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Would your mind have allowed you to ask those questions and... In, in, with my in, mind, in show up. no, yeah. no, because I'm not worthy. 
These are two mm-hmm. of the people that I have admired for a really long period of time, and, and I am certainly not worthy to ask them to, to help me in any way. And so I knelt down and I said, now listen, you know, <laughs> I'm scared to go to this. And, and this little essence said back to me whatever, and it wasn't talking, but it was in my heart. It said, you just have to go, and I'll take care of everything. And as you know, as we've discussed, everything was taken care of. I didn't have to do anything except show up. That's what I'm talking about when we master a mind with a mind of its own, because whatever that is that's working on our behalf can then work for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very, very powerful. It's, um, it is super. Yeah, yeah it, it really is. It's happiness. Peace, all of that. You know that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Regina, we are coming up on our break. Uh, so before we get out of here, just want to remind everybody that if you have questions for Regina, please give us a call at 248-809-3475, or you can email us with a question at simplestepsatme.com. Now, we're going to be back here in about two or three minutes, and we will continue this absolutely incredible conversation Please don't go away. Stay with us. And now back to Simple Steps, Real Change with Cheryl Maloney and Kenny Brixie on Empower Radio. Welcome back, everyone. We are here with Regina Cates tonight, and it's been just a wonderful conversation so far, and I'm sure the rest of the show is going to be as well. Uh, Just a reminder before we get back to uh, Regina, uh, the call-in number again is 248-809-3475. So if you have a question for either Cheryl, myself, or Regina, please give us a call. We would love to chat with you. Or if you don't want to talk on the radio, or like Cheryl said earlier, if you're out of the country and would rather email... The email address is simplesteps at me.com. That's simplesteps at me, M E dot com. Um, Regina, before we left, you had, uh, you had mentioned that our mind tells us what we want to hear in, in the rationalizations, the justifications you know, of our behavior, and our soul tells us what we need to hear, why these rationalizations and justifications do not support our best life. Mm-hmm. Don't we need to listen to both? Well, we do need to listen to both, and, and that's why we have to evaluate what the mind is saying to us, okay? Because the mind is going to justify any kind of behavior, Kenny. You know, I'll use the example of the very attractive man across the room, but all of a sudden we get close, and there's something that's just not right, and our heart feels that. You know, our heart is right, because down the road we go out with him four or five times, and down the road we find out that we were right all along. These things happen to us all the time. We discount that. We discount that immediately with rationalizations of, oh, my goodness, he's so precious, whatever, whatever our mind creates. So you're right. We do have to evaluate our thoughts. But it's, it's when we get used to doing this and when we get used to seeing what our mind does that quickly to rationalize something, then we can distinguish very easily between what you, you just asked me, those mm-hmm. two questions, okay? Because the mind is not necessarily wrong about certain things. We just have to make sure that it is right with the higher wisdom of our heart. Mm-hmm. What, do, what do you say to the person who says they just can't listen to their soul because they have to be practical? Mm-hmm. Well, that to me is practical, actually. Kenny, <laughs> okay. It know? is to me as well. <laughs> okay, well, that's what I would say. I mean, that is the practical part of it. You know? Yeah. Well, actually- and Regina... <laughs> Sorry. One of the things we hear, and the reason why this particular question came up, is people don't trust their own judgment. They have relied on other people to make the decisions that, you know, they followed all their lives, so they don't know how to trust. They don't know how to hear their own soul. So how do we help them tune into that? Well, first they have to learn to trust themselves, and that is taking the actions. You know, uh, when I did not trust myself, Cheryl, it was very, it was because I was not doing what I know I needed to do, you know. Uh, whether it would be not go out with that guy or whatever, I was not aligned with that, with the the higher operating principles of what was actually right. So I didn't trust myself to show up on time, or I didn't trust myself to stay away from the people that were not good enough, uh, or, or were doing things that were bad, okay, and could have pulled me down. So that's the first thing is learning to trust yourself. And when you learn to trust yourself, like I'm making a promise to myself to go to the gym every, you know, five days a week. I trust myself because I keep my word to myself. Does that make sense? 
It does. And, and I hear, and I hear what you're saying. I think that where we get the most pushback is from people that are going, okay, you tell me I need to trust myself, but how do I know I'm right? Because I don't know what my soul is. Yeah, I've got this voice talking inside of me, but how do I know it's not just my mother or, you know, my best friend's thoughts? How do I know these are truly mine? The way that I distinguish that, because I had to reprogram myself, so the way that I distinguish that is that it's going to be in my best interest. And that, that's not a self-centered thing at all. That's not egotistical. But it's in my best interest. Let's say that uh, I was raised in a particular circumstance that might have been abusive. Then leaving at the, at the earliest opportunity is in my best interest because I'm not going to be able to change anyone I'm in, in relationship with. Do you see what I mean? So that's when, when our soul says, listen, you need to go ahead and get out of this particular circumstance. And the mind will justify, well, they're really going to change. They've told me they're going to change. And four years go by, and the behavior is still exactly the same. The soul is still telling you, hey, you need to get out of this. So trusting that, Cheryl, is when you choose what is in your best interest. It's what's safest for you. It's most positive for you. And that, again, I'm saying it's not a self-centered thing. It is a, a loving thing. Sure. Well, and I agree with you. What do you say to the person that says, and here's where we hear it most often, it's a marriage that isn't working out, but there's children. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't do what's best for me. I have to put my children first. Well, what's best for you is probably going to be what's best for the children in the long run, too. And that's where people rationalize this because they have to stay together for the children. And that is not the right reason to stay together in a marriage. Mm -mm. That is not it. That is a self-centered reason, and it's one of those things, you know, sometimes I can't blanket that across the entire board. I'd have to know each individual circumstance, but that is something that I hear all the time, too. And then, by the way, when these folks do go ahead and get uh, separated, because they do in the long run, and they will, then the children are much better off because there's not that fighting. There's not that constant negative energy that's in the household. Well, and we sell the children short if we think that they don't really understand what's going on between a husband and wife. They, you know, that tension that builds up there affects them as much as not having a mother and father living together. Probably well, more because they're, they're subjected to this negative energy. Well, and you're right. They so can't not, get away from it. You're correct. And it's not only negative energy. It's 93% of all communication is nonverbal. Yeah. Think about that. Exactly. You're talking about just walking through a room and having some sort of aggravated feeling. How is that going to be good for the children? Also, you know, a part of the responsibility that we have is to set the, the best example that we possibly can, and sometimes that example is setting a boundary with other people, and sometimes that means a separation. So that's exactly what I would say. You need to look beyond yourself and what you think is right because you need to see the entire picture. Yeah, sometimes that means you need to step back, take mm -hmm. a breath defuse right. the energy of it so that you can see it for what it is. That's exactly right. And that's what mastering a mind with a mind of its own is all about. Yeah. You know, a part of it, mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to bring this up, we were talking about it a second ago, and that is that we are, there is no I. We are all connected. All life is connected. Mm -hmm. So when we are trapped in this dialogue that we have with ourselves, such as the rude driver justifying why he can honk at a pedestrian walking across the street, then there is no, there's no understanding or acceptance that there's anything else out there, okay, other than this, just this, this self-centeredness. We are individuals, and yet we're all connected. Therefore, we have to take into consideration how our actions are going to impact everyone else. So if we're not thinking about what we're thinking about, if we're not in charge of our feelings and our thoughts that are directing our behavior, then we're operating totally, it's all about me, and it's all about what I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is huge. Right. I've, got to ask this, I've got to ask this question, Regina, because I go back to, and I want to say my generation, maybe it's even my mother's generation, where we were always taught that you put the needs of everyone else before you, regardless of what's right for you. Mm -hmm. And that was that was a way of life for the longest period of time. I look at so many women now that are in their 70s and 80s. They've done whatever their husband wanted to do because that's what you did. Mm -hmm. And that's changing. So how do we help that generation change? Well, there's an essay in my book called Love Yourself Most. 
and it's um, one that I, I really want the entire world to read because if we do not care for ourselves and take care of our own needs, then we cannot care for anyone else. So that thinking that uh, my mother was subjected to and I was subjected to also that came through uh, my experience in organized religion when I was growing up as women are subservient to men and all of these other things that we've been uh, indoctrinated with, I think, needs to change because it is not true. Because whenever we put ourselves second, then we're going to have resentment, we're going to have uh, all sorts of problems, and that's not what love is anyway. Now, and Regina, that sounds like it's a whole other show, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, there could be, because uh, the people that I deal with and work with and have the privilege of having in my life don't know what love is. You know, I was not taught what love was. Mm-mm. You know, and that is another show. But part of mastering a mind with a mind of its own is that you are able to love yourself because when your thoughts change, when my thoughts changed from persecuting myself to loving myself and supporting myself, my entire life changed. And when my life changed, how I saw other people change. That's the ticket, see? When we, when we care enough to master our own being, um, and allow the soul to lead us. And whenever the soul leads us, Cheryl, Kenny, it's going to be positive. It's going to be cooperative, loving. It's going to look at the entire big picture. It's going to look several generations down to see what we're doing to our planet and, and leaving to our children. That's what the power of the soul. And the mind is the part that rationalizes that this is only, you know, we've got to do it right this second. We've got to use all of this, and there is no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when you, when you look at... When you look at other people, situations, life circumstances, everything through, like you say, through the soul, mm-hmm. it it expands. It's that positive, expanding energy, and you will see the people in your life differently. So when you have a problem with somebody else, tune back in to your soul, to, to, to what I call the essence, and, and we talked about this the other day. It's kind of the same thing. Um, tune back into that and look at it again. And you will see it in a totally different way. Well, you will, because the soul is love, and that's really who we are, you know. Yeah. And we are, yeah. we are giving people, enduring people. We are nurturing, patient, loyal, peaceful, tender, accepting. These are who we are naturally. This is what it means to operate from the soul. And instead of being closed-minded, you are understanding. Mm-hmm. Instead of, you know, thinking that there's lack in the world, you're supportive that someone else gets a good deal. Yeah. yeah. That's the soul operating. So if people have a hard time understanding what the soul does compared to the mind, the mind is going to tell you that there's limited resources and there's only a few dollars out there and we have to scratch and and claw our way and and tear through everybody else in order to get it. The soul is going to tell you it's limitless. Right, right. (laughs) Yeah, and and, and in in my case, the uh, the mind sometimes is louder than the soul on that particular particular thing. I have to keep reminding myself, no, that's not the truth. There is no lack. So, well, that's um, true, and and you feel the difference, don't you, Kenny? Oh yeah, oh it, it, it really is. It's I I learned one thing that that is that has helped me tremendously in tuning in to where I, my mind is. If if I feel things are contracting, I know that my mind is speaking louder than my soul. Got it. Perfect. If things are expanding, I'm right where I want to be. That's exactly right. Good for you. That's a beautiful way of putting it, and it's so true. It's including mm-hmm. everything else other than just you. You are an individual, and you are here as an individual representation of, of that whatever that creative energy is. Each of us is, and yet we're a part of the entire whole, and we are here to work together, and we're here to, to acknowledge one another and to be courteous and kind and each live and express as a spiritual being. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I just love that. And it's um, through love. It's through the behaviors of love that we do that. And so you asked me earlier, how do you really know when it's true for you? Well, it's through the behaviors of love. Is it nurturing? Is it self-compassionate? Is it devoted to yourself? You know, mm-hmm. Are you forgiving yourself? Are you encouraging yourself? Are you supportive of yourself? Respectful, honest. All of these wonderful behaviors of love, if you are doing those, then you're going to be able to naturally do those to someone else, Cheryl. That's why, you know, my mother, I love her to death, and she was raised in a time where she did for everybody else, but there was also a resentment there of having to do that. But if you give from love, then there is no resentment. 
No, and Regina, I think that's a great point. So let me ask another question because this this comes up, and I know it came up for me a lot and still does. You you talk about being okay with silence. You know, when you just be comfortable with stillness and listening to your thoughts, how do you help people? Because I know I'm a good example of this. How do you help someone to just quiet their mind and be still so they can hear their soul? First of all, is is anyone who works with me privately turns off all radio, all television uh, for a long period of time. No radio in the car, no cell phone, any of that, because uh, these are all distractions that keep us from actually hearing our head and hearing those thoughts. I want people to sit down and I want them to hear their thoughts. I want them to hear the negative and the nasty and everything, and I want them to become attached to those in a way that they recognize them and honor those, because then they can change them. So, Cheryl, that's it. The first thing you do is you surround yourself with silence because then you can actually hear what your mind is saying to you and you can be present with that. And when you're present with that, I promise you 100% guarantee the thoughts are going to not be nearly as nasty as you think they are. It just seems like there, like you said, there's so many distractions in our lives from the cell phones to the computers to the tel- television that are really masking. We are, we're reacting to what we're seeing, reading, or hearing. We're not genuinely hearing. We're, we, we get into reaction mode as opposed to, to truly understanding and listening because we are so distracted. Mm-hmm. But who's in charge of those yeah. distractions? We are, because they're always going to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's another essay in the book. You know, <laughs> we have to be the one that's in charge of technology. Technology is to work for us, not the other way around. Yeah, we've become slaves to it in so many different ways, or a lot of people have. Well, when we we go ahead. Well, I just want to say real quickly, Kenny. When we do that, we leave our emotions somewhere else. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a way to. It's a way to. It's an avoidance for me. And, and I, I, when I, I, I catch myself, anytime I get caught up in, in, in hours of TV, if I tune into myself, I know that I'm avoiding something. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just a matter of finding out. I don't do that very much anymore. But, yeah, it's, it's an avoidance of emotions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, well and it, it, I look at it two ways because, Kenny, you're right. When you're sitting there watching Mindless, you don't have to think. You don't have to do anything except being entertained, and there's a value to that. But you also see if you've got the news or you have television on, a lot of it is negative. So all of a sudden you're interjecting more negativity into your life, and that doesn't help you. Mm-hmm. That's correct. You have to protect your mind and heart. You know, it's interesting because there's a lot of research being done with uh, the brain that changes itself by Dr. Norman Dottage. He's a Canadian psychiatrist and and how the brain actually rewires itself. And one of the um, examples he uses is with pornography. And people that are repeatedly exposed to pornography, they actually become addicted to it. This is how addictions happen because your brain rewires itself and you have to have it. So it's extraordinarily important, and we need to understand and take responsibility for what we let into our mind and heart, because what we put in is just like what we eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We really have to be very careful about this, Uh, and and that's why you have to think about what you're thinking about. Am I rationalizing? Cheryl, you said something. When I watch television, I am totally engrossed in what I watch. I am fully present in it. I am invested fully in whatever it is that I watch. I never mind out. I never just zone out. That's what being fully present to me is. And, you know, someone will come up and interrupt me, and I I don't even hear them because I'm totally engrossed. However, I'm very careful as to what I'm totally engrossing myself in. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Okay. We... uh... We we we're very very picky about to what what goes on that tube here. <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy. Well, you had, you had talked about um, about uh, going and being silent and 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 letting your thoughts play out so that you get familiar with them. Now, there's a lot of teaching out there that talks about quieting your mind and getting into stillness. Let, you know, if the thoughts pop in, just acknowledge them and let them go back out. Uh, mm-hmm. What well, is there a benefit in your mind of, of that you know, uh, Kenny, teaching? I, you know, how, how does that work? Well, you know, and I used to say that a long time, quiet your mind, okay? Mm-hmm. And then I decided, you know what, my mind is never quiet. It's always going to do something because that's what the mind does. The mm-hmm. mind is the computer that evaluates through the eyes and the ears and the, you know, and, and the senses and everything else. It's always on. So quieting that mind 
is I think what they might mean by that is being in charge of it to the point where you do not let those negative limiting thoughts obsess you. Mm-hmm. Okay? My mind constantly thinks, and yet I surround myself with silence. I'm fully present in the moment, uh, but it's constantly talking. It's constantly going, but I'm in charge of it. I'm the author of it. I'm the one that can say, shh. I'm the one that says, don't go down that thought path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? That's what, to me, quieting the mind is because, you know, it's always going to think. Even in meditation, it thinks. I do transcendental Mm -hmm. meditation, and that is, for people that do transcendental meditation, the thoughts are a release of anxiety. It's always thinking constantly. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I... I, uh... When I was practicing meditation before I learned this, you know, I, I thought that, oh my God, I'm, I, I just had a thought. How bad? I'm, I'm messing up. You know? <laughs> and it would become just a, it would become a forum for me beating myself up. And uh, when I finally just accepted what you're saying, the thoughts are happening, mm-hmm. and I acknowledge them mm-hmm. and let them go off to the side, you know. And if it's one of the negative ones, it's like, no, 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 we're 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 gonna we're gonna not go there today. And, uh, um, yeah, my meditations became much more impactful and, uh, um, much more relaxing and calming, much more beneficial. And they also connected you to the center place where you are. They connected you more to soul, Kenny. Okay. Because Mm -hmm. you were in charge of your mind. You brought it back. Right. Right. And can't we also do this? I mean, not outside of a meditation environment when these negative thoughts keep popping into our brain and sometimes they're the same thoughts we had yesterday and a week ago and a month ago and they keep coming up we can do the same thing we can acknowledge you're there but then we go no i'm not that doesn't serve me i'm going here instead you know that may have been the way it was but now we were talking about you know eating the right things you know that may have been what i did before but today i'm being more conscious of what i'm feeding my body or what i'm feeding my soul or what i'm feeding my mind and we just have to learn how to say no and i like it when people say is you know no is a statement all by itself it doesn't require any other words sometimes we have to be able to say no that doesn't work for us any longer Mm -hmm. That's correct. And I think acknowledging the thoughts and getting to the bottom of them, especially, Cheryl, if they're ones that we're having over and over and over, is turning and facing those and really evaluating those. Because once we do that, for me and my experience and the folks that I work with, they're gone. They don't have those thoughts again. And if they do, they're just so fleeting. It's like they start laughing, you know. (laughs) It's, It's over with. So it's very and with important. time and experience, we get better yeah. at it. The more the more we practice what you're talking about, the more we practice it, the more we become for, comfortable. And you say they're fleeting after that. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. fleeting is like, eh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes, that's right. And it does take practice. You know, uh, you said earlier in the, in the other show that these are simple steps, but it's not necessarily easy. Uh, I'm not going to limit that and say that this is not easy, but it is something that has to be purposeful. It has to be top, top priority to master a mind with a mind of its own. Because for me, and here's the big punchline for this evening, it is what opens the door to understanding what a conscious existence is about. Because once the mind is con- under control, then the soul can come forward. And that's, to me, ladies and gentlemen, where the fun begins. Because once you've mastered a mind with a mind of its own, then you really can start listening to your soul. And that's why it really is a 24-7, 365 thing. And to me today, this has been years that I've been doing this now. And to me, for me today, it's still something that I do 24-7, 365, because my mind is never going to be quiet. Mm-hmm. I mean, it'll, well, be, all, it'll be peaceful. But all, right, not all of this is a choice. Uh-huh. And as, as folks are dealing with the negativity out there and we're giving them and you're giving them some great ideas on it's time to master the mind that has a mind of its own. This is a choice that you make. You can also mm-hmm. make the choice not to have that happen and get into this negative space, but realize that's a choice that you are making for you and it doesn't really serve you. So don't you want to try something different? That's right, and this is all about trying something different. And I have found for me and the folks that I work with, this, this is step number one. Become aware that you are thinking, and then become aware that you are thinking all the time, and then become attached to what you are thinking. Make sure that you know what you're thinking and the motivation behind what you're thinking. Is it anger? Is it fear? Is it um, shame? Mm-hmm. Is it happiness? What is it? 
And that's, I think that's a direction that a lot of people don't get into that level of depth. They just think it, but they're not looking at where's that thought coming from and why are we having it? Mm -hmm. Because we really need to figure out why is that coming forward so then we can adjust and adapt to it. Okay, I'm doing this because I've been hurt in the past. All right, the past isn't here. What can I do now that is going to serve me better? Mm -hmm. And it is about, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this. That's so, exactly you right. know, yeah. we, started, we started out this conversation early on with a question about, I have this self-sabotaging aspect, mm -hmm. and I, I don't let myself do the things that I really enjoy in life, because there's always something going on in my mind that I don't deserve it, or I'm not worthy, mm -hmm. when if we look at what serves us, mm -hmm. we realize we are worthy, Mm -hmm. Go have that fun. Go Absolutely. do what your heart and your soul calls to you. Because if you don't, then you're not aligned with soul, and that's the whole reason for your existence. Each one of us is a unique expression of the divine or whatever that creative energy source is, the good, the, the powerful, the kind, and all of the behaviors of love. And if we are not aligned with that, then we will suffer in this life because that is what we are here to be, is the very best me that we can possibly be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, Regina, we have come to the end of our show, and it feels like we're stopping short because everything was going wrong so great there. <laughs> but uh, we're here. But before we let you go, we'd love to find out. Please share with our audience, how do they get in touch with you? Your website, your Facebook, your email, how do they get in touch with you best? Sure. Well, my email is, is regina at romancingyoursoul.com, and the website is romancingyoursoul.com. And on Facebook, it's RomancingYourSoul.com. And should the book be published sometime in the, in, within my lifetime, then it will be Romancing Your Soul. <laughs> We're going to believe into that. It will happen we soon. Are. <laughs> it will. When it's right, it will, Kenny. Yeah, yeah, it will. Well, with well, that, Rich, we're going to just say thank you so yes, much for being thank with you. us tonight. It's been a, a pleasure and an honor, as always, and we just love having you here. Uh, Cheryl, what, what kind of takeaways do you have from the conversation tonight? You know, I think, Kenny, the biggest takeaway for me is that we can listen to our souls without shutting our minds off. We have to acknowledge what's going on in our mind, but really understand where it's coming from and then be able to listen deeper and make those choices that serve us better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what about for you? For, for me, it was it was a wonderful reminder that that, that this is not a battle between my mind and my soul it's it's not one is good and one is bad it's that it's that i need to bring them both into into alignment with my purpose and um and just tune into them it's not the battle that that i have to get rid of one and keep the other mm -hmm. so uh, that's that's actually very relaxing to me <laughs> because that, that battle can be uh, stressful and and uh and uh, heated at times. <laughs> well, isn't it amazing that every time we have a guest on the show, we walk away and we learn so much more. But before we close off tonight, um, our thanks to our producer, Andrew, who has made this so smooth. And uh -huh. of course, to Brent Carey from Empower Radio that allows us to bring Regina. Mm -hmm. And Kenny, what's up next week? Next week, we have my friend, our friend, Pam Thomas. If you guys have not heard Pam in a while, please tune in. She is fun. We're going to talk about building self-esteem when you're trying to start over. Uh, she's a self-care guru S, if you want to call it that. Anyway, it's going to be a great time. So please join us again next week. Thanks, everyone, for being with us tonight, and have a great rest of your week. Thank you, everybody. Good night.